Hey everybody, welcome to the show here. We're going to have a little cocktail hour, going to have a little bit of conversation. Hadn't seen y'all in a while. Y'all hadn't seen us in a while. So we need right. to get back together and see what we got going on. That was beautiful. That was, that that was gorgeous. Yeah. I have to turn a light on because I look like Barnabas Collins right now and I don't want to frighten the people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, okay. I'll wait right here. Uh, Sherry missed the pre-production meeting that we had today <laughs> prior to uh, to coming on. Yeah, yeah. Hi to uh, Jane Stevens. Hello from Lima, Ohio. I hope yes. you're nice and warm there, Jane. Boy, oh boy, there's so Tammy? many places where it's ah. very cold. Tammy uh, Johnson, uh, yes. good to see you guys. Thank you. That's true. We really haven't been together doing a happy hour in a, a about a month. Yeah, 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 in about a month. With yeah. all, the, all the holidays and all the things going on in people's lives and everything. Uh, Regina Denton, welcome hey, back. There's Susan. my girl. Hey, Regina. Yeah. And Susan Lane. Nice to see Susan. Renee Goodspeed. Hi to everybody from Wake Forest. And let's see. Andy is with us. McClure. Uh, it's been an ice apocalypse here. I don't know where here is. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. It, it it really is. Oh my goodness, it's so cold. You know, um, I grew up in a very cold area in Connecticut, and I swear, I you know, fight me on this. I swear it was colder when I was a kid than it is now for whatever reason. <laughs> um, winters. I, I mean, it's not your imagination, Bob. Winters yeah. were way more severe in that part of the world. Although my you know my brother um, and his wife live just outside of Philly. They work in Philly. Right. Like the blizzards and nor'easters and winter storms. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like every weekend this time of the year for them. Yeah. But it's the first time that they've had an inch of snow or more in New York City in Central Park. And yeah. there was an article today in, I forget what publication that I was reading. Is this the last snowstorm for New York because of just different, you know, changes in our world? And I looked at that and I went, oh, vague. I'm not even going to read it. It'd be so depressing. You know what the but, last does does the size of New York, you know, Atlanta, like in the summertime, Atlanta has its own weather situation because of the city and everything. I wonder if New yeah. York, I wonder if it affects that. Well, the only effect is in uh, Midtown Manhattan, where um, house co-ops start at about $4 million. Nothing hurts those people. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the Russian army could Mark. come in and, and they could they have staff. Attack. To, they, they have do. staff to experience yeah. the to weather. They got a doorman for that. There's yeah. a doorman for that. <laughs> they got a scary doorman. That's exactly right. You know, as a kid, I would see um, movies with uh, beautiful apartments in New York. And, you know, we were poor, but we were only 90 miles away. And I would say that would be the coolest thing in the world to have your house within walking distance of all these restaurants and uh, all these museums and everything and have a doorman in that snazzy uniform that they have, you know? And then I, I would you call never him. open your own door. You never yeah, open your own right. door. Yeah, right. And I'd say, hello, Bill. Are you having a good day today? Well, yes, Mr. Bob, I sure am, you know? The really only good. negative to that, like maybe it only works really well in New York City and Paris because one of my besties um, moved into a mid-rise apartment building that had, they called it a concierge, but uh, you, here's the deal. You couldn't get, you couldn't get to her apartment from the lobby without the concierge calling upstairs and then walking you to the elevator and using a key code to make the elevator work. If you Which, were a friend, visit. If you were a guest, right? So, yeah. okay, like whatever. Let's all pretend we're in some Technicolor movie on Turner Classic. But this day comes when my phone rings and it's my girlfriend and she's like, honey, I am so sick. I cannot get out of bed. I am begging you to give, bring me mission of mercy. I need Gatorade, this, 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 right? <laughs> she said, I, I am going to crawl to my door and unlock it. When they let you up, just come straight in. I said, I got you say no more. I jump in my car. I race to the grocery store. I'm getting Progresso chicken soup and Gatorade and toast and all the things, right? I get, I, I get there. I park. Now parking is an entire nightmare because there are, let's say there are 600 apartments and 550 parking spaces. Right. So parking is an entire nightmare. I, I finally find a parking space, drag all the groceries into the lobby 
Um, the concierge is not at the desk. Why is the concierge not at the desk? No one knows. Someone else is waiting also. Concierge finally comes back to the desk and this person is has a flower delivery. And the concierge takes the flowers and goes up into the bowels of the building to deliver the flowers. I ended up being in the lobby for more than a half an hour while my friend is sick, waiting upstairs for medicine and Gatorade. Yeah. And that's so, so I'm like, tell you what, tell you what, how about if we all live somewhere where we don't have a freaking gatekeeper that prevents us from knocking on the door? Tell me that wouldn't make you crazy. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't it'd like be, that situation. The first time it'd be fun. The first time it'd be cool, but I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't want that situation, but the whole, you know, doorman thing was just kind of cool, especially, by the way, one of our uh, viewers tonight said I was talking, I was actually referring to an area in the Upper East Side and not Midtown Manhattan. And I stand corrected. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, um, welcome East Side, because that's how the Jefferson song went. Up on the <laughs> moving on up. Yep. Moving on up. To that the was, East Side. they were, they were in Chicago though. Weren't they the Jefferson? No, they were in New York. Oh, they were in sure New York. about that? Yeah. In a deluxe apartment in the sky. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah, that was New York. You know, um, you know what it was? You and I have a friend, Renata Joy, who went mm -hmm. to work for Oprah. I used she used to be one of my producers in TV. And uh her her the, she was African American. And I said, What did what did you folks do? And and she looked down and she said, They had dry cleaners in Chicago. Yeah, just like the Jeffersons. <laughs> <laughs> So I think Let me go ahead and tell you, if yeah. it was by the Jeffersons, that's a pretty cool deal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Do all right. <laughs> um, I want to thank all the people that are asking how Kevin, how the sheriff's doing. He's, you know what, he's doing really well. Um, it's hard because he can't move, and he is not a person who can sit around all day and not move. And he's got some pain, which you would expect given all the broken bones and surgical incisions and stuff, but. Um, he's doing, he's doing really well. And I told him that's because he's getting first rate home health care. Oh, I yeah. wait on him hand and foot. I bring him all of his meals on trays. Sometimes I show him my boobs, which you don't get in the hospital, even with good health insurance. No. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing what I can to keep him, to keep him going, but good damn, him. damn, it's hard. Yeah. Well, you have an easy life. You know, what do you do? You talk on the radio for a few hours mm -hmm. for some that friends. You know, that's really, yeah. I don't know how we stay away. you don't have anything else going on. I have to say, Sherry, that your hair, I've not seen you in a month and mm -hmm. I was anti, um, you're letting your hair, uh, go wild, but, uh, it looks terrific. Uh, oh, it, thank it's, you. it's grown out and it's that real, that sort of white haired power bitch thing. That's what, <laughs> kind of what you got going right there. You that's what, what I was shooting for. Actually, <laughs> that's what I was shooting for. Landed. Yeah. No, I, I mean, one of the best things about it is like, I don't now, I mean, I already didn't brush it or blow dry it. Now uh -huh. I just, I basically just shampoo it and walk around with it sitting on my head. It is very low maintenance, but I'm thinking about for spring, Heather, maybe a little rose gold tipping. What do you think? Yeah. Um, as long as you, you know, if you're doing it on the tips, you can cut it off if you decide you absolutely hate it. Cause Rose gold will hold on for dear life. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it'll look gorgeous, but it, the color will hold on for dear life on, on light white like that. So You know have, what else have, holds have on for on dear life? Shirt. Alimony. Alimony holds on for dear life. <laughs> Preach that. <laughs> Preach that. Don't put, don't, put, don't put any more color in it. Just that solid thing. That's the power that it's, it's totally that silvery white. Why would, yeah. why would you add more to it? Well, you know, I'm not used to just having my hair. Like I've been, I've been jacking with my hair since I was a teenager. Heather, you know that that after you know, if enough time goes by and you're like, well, I haven't done anything to my hair in forever. It's time to do something to my hair. Well, and also, if you've always wanted to play with color, but you've always had dark hair, mm -hmm. you don't really have the option to put like pink in it or purple or blue because it doesn't show up on really really dark hair unless you are willing to murder it with bleach. So I can understand the yeah. moment to finally have a little bit of something. I got uh, a DM on my Instagram from a man who said, um, for what it's worth, I really wish you would dye your hair again. <laughs> and I'm like, sir, it's worth 
a dog's ass. Like <laughs> I am not going to oblige oh, you. Did he, did he mean going dark again? Going, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I didn't want you to do it because I was just so used to looking at you with the it dark hair. Great. You have great hair, but great. I think it's very cool now. I do. I think it's yeah. very cool. It looks. Great. I like it. Cat loves it. You know, like strangers. It's so weird because strangers in real life of all like sizes, shapes, and ages stop me all the time and say, did your hair just do that? Or who did that to your hair? Mm -hmm. Whereas on the internet, people are such bags of ass. They're like, well, I hope your husband likes it because it looks like he's with his grandmother. You know, people are nasty as shit on the internet. And then in real life, people are like, girl, who did your hair? So, you is know. It, is, that, is that your natural hair or is it, or is it colored? It's all natural, yeah. Is yeah. it really? How did you get the, that color so, I mean, early Genetics. in Genetics. Yeah. Really? But you have to remember, I have a grandma white hair. Oh, like yeah. my great my great grandmother had snow white hair and my grandma black hair who dyed her hair like Elvis until the day she drew her last breath. If she had stopped dyeing her hair, it would have been this color. My mom's hair is this color. My bro my big brother's hair is this color. Like, and look at Lamar, like some people, Lamar, we're lucky because some yeah. people, it doesn't go silver white, frosty white. It goes iron gray. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we're lucky that, um, I mean, and it's just genetics and it, Bob, I didn't know until I let it go what was under there because I haven't had my natural hair color since maybe 10th grade. Really? Like it was in the wow. neighborhood. Yeah. Like it was in the neighborhood of my natural hair color, but my no. natural hair color was a really light reddish brown. And yeah. I always thought it, it made me look washed out. I have to get this. I'm hoping this is good news. Hang on. Y'all talk. Well, okay. um, oh, thank you. Shows up with no lighting, and now she's taking oh, phone. <laughs> um, that, that that was very interesting. I, I'm very lucky because this wig is just working great for me. You know, is that your color, Bob? Uh sort of. Okay, I got you. Sort of. Yeah. I had thought about when I first started going gray uh, years ago. I asked the lady that does my hair. I said, "Should we do something about this?" She said, "You're an idiot if you do." Really? Why did, why did she say that? She said, because she said, the, it, it's, it's going to be, she said, I can tell it's going to be a oh, great color or white. Know. And she says, it's different for a man. It's different for a man. Huh. You know, you, yeah. The gray hair. Listen, I worked with a guy. This has been many, many, many years ago. He worked at Budweiser. He was like 29 or so. And he was already salt and pepper. And mm -hmm. it was mostly salt. By the time he was 32, and he had this thick mane. Oh my God. Richard Gere wish he had this hair. I'm talking really? about it. it was just, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He he oh the women. Oh my god. I tell you what, he was a spare guy. He was a spare guy. He ran my route while I was on vacation. I come back. I've been running. I, I know these people. I, I've been running around. I've been having these same people the whole time. I come back and to a every place that I went in. There's a lot of ladies that work in convenience stores and, and check in at grocery stores. Where, where's so-and-so? When's he coming back? No, no. He doesn't work. The, I work this route. I've been working this route for 10 years. I said, he only does it for a week. Well, if you're sick, will he come back? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was. He was devastating. And he, and he wound up. His father was a fireman. So when he left us, he went to work as a fireman. So he's this good looking, I'm like, oh my gosh, ridiculous. ridiculous. I, had, I had a friend of mine uh, who was the drummer in my uh, garage band and he was real tall and had very um, sort of uh, curly hair, kinky curly hair. Yeah. He had he had good hair, but it, it was that texture. And I had not, and, and uh, he was really into Jimi Hendrix. And so uh, when we were kids, he, he put his hair out like that. Yeah. And his hair would grow that way, you know? And I had not seen him since we were, uh, I don't know, 22, something like that. And I went to a wedding that we were both invited to, and he showed up, and his hair was completely white. And I, I think I'd seen a picture of him somewhere, maybe online. So I wasn't surprised, but uh, he said, Bobby. And I went, hello. Hey, Bo, how you doing? The first thing he said, this went premature, just like Steve Martin. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, I, 
I wasn't going to say, what happened? You know? I'm going to have a panic attack. But I think he was so used to that, that that was his default to talk about the color of his hair at, I, at a fairly early age. I live by that old standard. I don't care what color it turns, as long as it don't turn loose. Okay? Don't turn loose. They yeah. Loose, yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. So um, let me see. What it, We want to, I think, uh, talk about the, uh, the weather with our viewers and listeners uh, in cold weather places, because holy, holy smoke, it was in the Dakotas, I think actual temperature was like oh, yeah, yeah. 14 below zero, something like that, 16 below zero, even even less than that. That is that is just flat ass, it could kill That's you cold. cold. That's but cold. those folks, I, I mean, they know how to handle it. Sherry and I have been there uh, this time of the year several times. Yeah. Um, but I, I haven't lived it. I haven't lived that sort of weather in a while. And when you see the cars sliding all over the place, you see somebody getting three of his friends to push a car we'll to get it away. going. You know, it we'll you know it, it really does bring you back to when you were uh, when you were a kid going through that. It's beautiful in a way, you know, for a while. Like Mary wants nothing more than to see snow. But sometimes when you're fighting it, holy cow. Oh, yeah. It's great to see it. But day in and day out, I remember when uh, we went up to, um, I guess it was Wisconsin or oh, it what, like two years ago. And it was, hey, Cher, hey, Cher, go to the next room. I'm trying to hear Lamar. Um, and we're up there in the springtime and we we're talking about it. They only had a few months of, of, of good weather and they were talking about snow. And they said, oh, the snow is beautiful. But right. after a little while, it becomes dirty and they're, you know, they're having the end of the year yeah. and it's it looking rough and it's, but I can't imagine that temperature all the time. The coldest I've ever been, I took my kids to Banff in the winter time and we're standing up on top of the mountain waiting for the ski thing. And it was, the wind was whipping and it was below zero. Now we were dressed for it. I mean, we were, but boy, when it was hitting your face, God. yeah, the wind, it's the wind, you know, a still cold is not bad. I, yeah. I can, I can handle that. But yeah. as soon as you kick in like 10 or 15 miles per hour, uh, uh, Becky, uh, one of our longtime listeners in Maine just said, I love the snow. She talks about it all year long. Be in, if, if it goes above 78 degrees in Maine, Becky is pissed off. So she's just, there are people who just love that really cold weather. But the worst situation that I have ever been in, I was driving with some friends. One of them, the, I was a kid. I was like 16, 17 years old. But somebody had a sedan, an old sedan Jaguar. And I think it was somebody's brother. And we were coming from a gig somewhere. And we're going from Providence, Rhode Island, back to uh, New Haven, Connecticut. And it was like one o'clock in the morning. And so the snow is, there's like six inches of snow already, fresh snow on the ground. And we're going, I forget the, the highway, but anyway, we're going up a hill. And, um, you know, we're kind of worried, can we make this hill? And, and the brother who's driving the old Jag, you know, he's pushing it and pushing it. All of a sudden we see what looks like a truck, way, a big truck at the top of the hill cresting coming down and we're going up and going to he loses control of the jag mm. and it goes sideways yep continues up the hill because it just had momentum and then yep. all of the uh, the snow was you know loose and i am in the passenger side so you know i'm not going to be the first one to get hit but i'm looking at this truck coming down and us going sideways <laughs> at it and i just thought well that's the end of this <laughs> Good night, everybody. And somehow he grabbed control of it. And, and I know anybody who lives in cold weather has a story like that to tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. No doubt. I just don't know. I guess it's, you know, Jim Sides. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. still is the select, but I did it in a martini. Not a martini, but a Manhattan. I'm sorry. A Manhattan. What are you what are you drinking? You're drinking uh, it's a Manhattan with yeah. uh, four roses select, yeah. you know, yeah. or single barrel. I want I want to can you see my Apple phone here? There yes. it is. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got that uh, a few months ago and I like it. I like the Apple phone. It's just that it is so um annoying in so many ways. It knows everything you're doing. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> like if, if I go like this, and I hope I don't do it, I'm going to do it softly. If I if I do that hard, all of a sudden it uh, vibrates and says, "Have you fallen? <laughs> have, you, have you fallen down? Have you fallen? Are you drunk? Is there something wrong with you? Did you hit your head when you were young? I mean, it just wants to know all. Should we send for help? And if I I I've never ignored it because I don't want to be walking around with a dog and here comes the fire engine and three ambulances, right? Just well, because surely you have to say, surely you have to say, yes, I need help before they send something, right? Well, they, they would. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. I guess you're right. But suppose you fell down and it picks up that you are, you know, you've fallen down. Maybe you bumped, maybe you're, you're out, you're unconscious. Would it not send for 911 help? Well, if it doesn't, then it's just being nosy. If it keeps yeah. asking. If it's just asking, All right, did you fall down? And you don't say anything. And it goes, well, I'm not going to do anything about it. I just wondered. I mean, did you yeah. fall down? You know? and, and, then it, and then it criticizes me. It says, you are taking fewer steps this week than you did last week. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I live in a one-story house. So friends of ours that we camped with, we were down in uh, Jacksonville and we we're playing cards. We're sitting there playing cards. And every once in a while, her phone would like buzz and it would look down and it would say, you need to get up and walk around and come back and sit down. And right. I mean, I'm like, leave me alone. I don't I know. I, see, this the, is what I the love. The phone is I'm right. Like, the phone is right. If you're sitting too long, you need to get up. I mean, that's. I love the improved. Apple products. I love them. I love them. I love my Apple. Yeah. Phone. yeah it's me great. Too. But me too. my wife keeps saying, do you want to get an Apple watch? No. I do not want to get an Apple Watch. I want a watch, watch, watch. Now, I noticed on your Apple Watch, you've actually got a watch face on there. See, I yeah. like it. Yeah, that's a watch face. Right. See? It's I very like cool. It. I like that. I like that. But it's, I just like I, a watch. I know. I do, too. I'm a watch guy. I don't. I can't walk out of the house without a watch on. I don't feel like oh. I'm totally dressed. Never. And I have two really nice watches, um, one that was given to me by a friend, and then one... Uh, that I bought um, once I set myself free and found out that life could actually be good. Um, and I love those watches, but I decided to get this because I, I walk so much, especially with yeah. Finn. I didn't want to carry that brick in my, in my, uh, in my pants, you know, the, yeah. the, the iPhone. Listen, and that's I, why I, I'm really you, trying to keep track of my, of my steps. I really am. And my, and the phone does a great job. It does a great job. Yeah. There's nothing. Um, there. I'll go to walk Darby. And I'll mm -hmm. get halfway down and I realize I don't have the phone. I come back to get it because if I walk without it, it doesn't count because you unless I can see it, it does. It does to me no good if it doesn't, if I can't see it. What's the news, Sherry? That was my daughter, Olivia. Um, she presented and defended her capstone paintings today and uh, was calling to let me know that it went great and that it's done and that she will be graduating. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's great news. Yeah, it's that really good news. Good for I you mean, both. Yeah. She had she had a ton of paintings to present. And then there's all this written stuff, too. And you have to kind of defend and justify your choices in terms of subject matter and technique. And there's a critique involved. And it's a big deal. She's been sure. a wreck of awesome. anxiety about it. Yeah. So um I cannot, there are some things in, in my life that I can be like, I'll call you back, but not that. No, not that. No, not that. No, you had to take that call. Yeah, you had You've to take that You've been worried about that all day, haven't you? I, I think I was more nervous than she was. I mean, because, you know, if you've ever been in a, like when I did my MSW, you have a major capstone presentation that's like heavily researched. I mean, it's crazy complicated. And you put so much work into it. And of course you're a nervous wreck about it, yes. but for an artist, it's so personal, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm presenting data on um, treatment modalities for bipolar disorder. This is like heart and soul for Olivia. It's a big deal. And COVID COVID threw a real monkey wrench for, for a studio art major. When you can't go to studios, it delayed graduation. It, it really made things challenging. And so today was a really big day and I've been waiting for that phone call for hours. So my apologies, so, but no, that's oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, so, so it was called, she was defending her presenting um, 
Capstone and defending Capstone. And defending. Yeah. The, uh, that's amazing. You know, I only have two years of college. The only thing I've really had to defend was my urban cowboy years, you know, uh, with what I was wearing. <laughs> I love urban cowboy years. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I love that you that that you were willing to put yourself out there in a in a fashion slash style kind of way. <laughs> I hate it. I, there there are two or three pictures. There's one that I think Heather posted, and and you're going to get uh, even less of a Christmas uh, gift this year because I think <laughs> where I I was with a girlfriend, and uh, the two of us were in our early twenties, and we were invited to go backstage. Oh and meet the captain and Tennille. No kidding. And I had a plaid Herb, uh, what was the guy, Herb and WKR? Tarlick. Herb Tarlick. Tarlick. Sport jacket on. <laughs> and, a, and a little mustache like this. And I had a, I know, I, 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 there was a gin and tonic in my hand, and I was, I wasn't buzzed, but I was really happy because I'm with the captain and freaking Tennille. <laughs> when I see that picture, it's like you were oh. happier than they were being with each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you post that, Heather, or was that Doc? Who posted? It might have that? been Doc, but I do remember seeing it. <laughs> and and uh, Doc cut out the uh, my date, who was a girlfriend of mine for several years. Great, brilliant person, and I'm so glad because she doesn't deserve, you know, that sort of humiliation. I'm used to it. <laughs> um someone just asked of it. <laughs> yeah someone yeah, just asked if i would show um some of olivia's paintings i'll show one of my favorites yeah she's she's spent the last couple of years working on the idea of um home and self and so i don't know if you can see it let me see it oh wow oh that's, that's lovely. a self-portrait yeah, yeah. And her, she carries her house, her home on her back, like in that. That's great. Okay. So, um, and she has a solo show coming up this summer that I'm really excited about. And someone asked me, what does capstone mean? So basically it is the culmination of your program. A lot of times like um, certain graduate programs have a capstone, like a master's in social work. Olivia is a BFA. And they have a, a capstone where they have to kind of bring together everything they've been doing and learning and studying and present it in a coherent, um, intellectual and aesthetic way. Like, this is who I am as an artist, and this is my journey at this moment. So it's super, super involved. And you can't, this isn't one of those things where you can wait till the last minute and then bang out a paper because you have to have. I mean, so many paintings and they have in, in different um, stages of development and, and you, you better have, you better have something to say as an artist, and then you better be able to describe your work. It's pretty intense. I've seen a couple of um, last year, some of the people that were ahead of her in the program, I saw some amazing work in their final capstones, like stuff. There was one girl, her name was Brenda. Her work made me cry. Like it was incredible. So yeah, it's good stuff. What, what I'm very the, proud what of What is the BFA? I've been called a BFT, but um, what is the BFT? <laughs> BFA, Bachelor in fine arts. Bachelor in fine arts. Fine okay. Arts. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just noticed there and congratulations to Olivia. She's yeah, she's congratulations. Always, it's been That's so awesome. brilliant with uh, her art, artistic bends and uh, work. We're so proud of her. Val Kingsbury said, what happened to Sky Pig? I can't believe you did that because. Because <laughs> here he is. There he is. <laughs> Sky Pig, would you like to say hello to Mar Lamar? <laughs> <laughs> Lamar, would you like to ask Sky Pig anything? <laughs> What's it like to have Bob squeezing your ass all the time? <laughs> It's delightful. Oh, I'm sorry. You were talking to Sky Pig. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Hey, Lamar, how do you like your new career? Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Sky Pig. It's a breeze. There's nothing to it. Right. That's right. It's just, I can't, just sitting around talking. I should be pay. I should be paying y'all. <laughs> Don't let Tony hear that. <laughs> Sky Pig, do you like Sherry's new hair? <laughs> I think that's See Sky Pig. That's a, that's a positive. That's a positive right there. All right, we'll uh, we'll let him rest for just a little while. 
Um, <laughs> Someone said, "Watch out, Lamar likes bacon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? Oh I have God, Lamar. Is. The Lamar that reminds me so. Kev's been trying to eat healthier, especially since he's like immobile. And I said, "Well, what, what, what do you think you might like for breakfast next week?" And he goes. Well, what about turkey bacon? I said, no, that is a blasphemy. There will be no turkey bacon in this home. No. And because it doesn't taste like bacon or like turkey. No. Yeah, so it doesn't. Double, I agree with Lamar on that. It's, it's a an double an deception. It's an impossible. Yeah. Let me tell you what I've discovered. Let me tell you what I've discovered. I have always maintained, I've always maintained that I'm against pre-cooked bacon. I'm against it. I'm, you know, I'm a rights bacon in the oven. Right. I'm against it. We went to some friends' houses and... We spent the weekend and we got up the next morning and they said, you, you want bacon? And I said, yeah, yeah, of course, without a doubt. And uh, <laughs> she pulls out this Costco and I, everything from Costco. I've never had a problem. She pulls out this big package of Costco pre-cooked bacon. Yeah. She put it in the microwave for a minute. She put it on my plate. Now, it's not Wright's bacon. It, it's not the same. It but to be, able, to be able to make bacon this bacon the quality of this bacon that you can get it in one minute now every sandwich i eat i just go oh i got a minute boom 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 i got bacon on everything i, I got bacon on every sandwich i eat peanut butter I, bacon 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 so, uh, sir, let me ask it, you let me ask you because i might want to get this for the sheriff as a little treat while he's laid up would you say that while it isn't like Wrights or Carol's or Newski's, would you say that it is at least equivalent to what you might get at like a dive breakfast place? With no doubt. With no doubt. Right. And I'm telling you, you take a paper towel and put it on a plate and you set it in the microwave. You put four slices on there and in one minute it's done and it's great. There's so many times I would like to add bacon to something I'm doing, but I don't want to go through 40 minutes. Now, all I need is about 50 seconds. Oh, my God. It's the greatest Aren't thing. Aren't you it's a little freaked out, though, that you, you know, you're in a store and there's no refrigeration, but there it is in the middle of the aisle next to the uh, sweatpants? No, no, you no. Know? I mean, this I can't. Is, this is in I the refrigerated section. This is in the refrigerated section. Lamar, you might have just saved my sanity because I've been getting up a half an hour earlier every yeah. day. And we already get up in the middle of the night a half an hour earlier every day because he doesn't eat sweet food. So no cereal, no Pop-Tart, nothing like that. No this muffin. Package, this package I have been making food. him like bacon and eggs and grits and toast and hash browns and all sorts of stuff. This thing's got 50 pieces of bacon in the pack. 50. 50. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. I got to add Costco to my uh, list next week when I get uh, out of the house. To, have, to be able to have decent bacon in one minute is just, it's a blessing. I don't go to Costco, but I go to Sam's Club. Mary has a Sam's Club thing. She got me the uh, the Sam's Club card. Is there not and a I'm, Costco near you? No, there's not. It's uh, Sam's Club is the only one. I would and, it's, and it's and it's good, you know. It is. I just find, you know, maybe it's just me that I go there for the paper products, and you know, I have a special area in the house where I can put them all, you know. And so whoa, all, whoa, of, whoa. The, all whoa, of the toilet you... paper is there, and all of the towels. But I got to admit, walking out with like um, enough toilet paper, you know, to take over a good portion of the U.S. armed forces. It is not the sexiest look for a man. It's not. You know? But listen, Bob, you you cannot judge warehouse club food until you have a Costco membership. Oh. Because oh. Costco is so next level. Mm. So Lamar, since you gave me the Costco bacon tip, allow me to give all of you a Costco tip. Um, if you go over, like Costco makes these rotisserie chickens that are so badass, it's insane. <sighs> And they're about a nickel. I mean, they're like they ridiculously money. good. Everyone they sell, they lose money. It's like, they yeah, it's a loss leader. Dollars a yeah. year on this, but oh my so, God. So in the meat section, not too far from where the rotisserie chickens are, look to your left. They take rotisserie chickens and they strip all the meat off and then they back it, they bag it and vacuum seal it. I brought one of those vacuum seal bags home before his surgery. Oh. I made chicken soup, white yep. chicken chili, chicken pot pie, and I put everything in the freezer. It was a game changer. Y'all, that is, if you have looked, if you've walked past those bags of no, pulled rotisserie chicken good. meat, do not. 
I mean, think not. about this. The rotisserie chicken's great, but they've pulled all of the meat off of that rotisserie chicken and gave it to you in a vacuum seal bag. Oh my God, it's awesome. And there's and there's so much meat in it. I made four chicken pies, a giant batch of white chicken chili, and um, a batch of chicken soup, and some chicken salad for him for lunch. And before I ran through that bag, it was amazing. Like, Would you like to see what Mary made for me as soon as I'm finished with this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm going to go it. get it. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> oh, look at okay. Lisa. How are you saying rolling deep in paper towels isn't sexy? Amen, Queen. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I love a man who's prepared. There I was a time. A there was a man. time when rolling with a big thing of paper towels or, or, or toilet paper, you would have been the king. And said, I'm not going to get caught like that again. Okay. Hey, during the COVID lockdowns, oh, yeah. I would have done some things for a roll of Costco toilet paper <laughs> because when the toilet paper shortages hit, we found some toilet paper online that um, when we weren't wiping our booties with it, we were sanding the chairs. Okay. It was <laughs> that horrifying. Thank you, so, Costco. So take a look at this. Ooh, it's got Are those snow peas. Corn. Yeah, and it's got rice, and snow. it's got uh, those snow peas. Snow peas, snow peas. yeah, snow pea pods. Oh, that, love, that looks delicious. Love snow peas. I like sugar stamp peas. I love those. Those are my favorite vegetables. Yeah. I love them. What's the difference between sugar snaps and um, snow peas? Are flatter, and the sugar snaps are a little bit they're, puffier. Yeah, and they're a little juicier. I yeah. think. Sugar snaps are a little bit. So, easier. what do y'all think is going on with uh, with uh, Kate with her uh, operation uh, in Great Britain, Kate Middleton? I'm worried. Yes, this that's a long time in the hospital. Um, they hear because the 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 announcement was um ab abdominal surgery, ten to fourteen days in the hospital. Yeah. Um, Prince the Princess of Wales has requested privacy. It's not cancer. I think that, you know, that's legitimate. Everybody wants to know. I mean, she's just so I know, it just scared me. That that yeah. phrasing, that yeah. that way that it was presented. Yeah. Um because you don't stay in a hospital for that long. I mean, you're lucky if you have open heart surgery and they keep you for a few days. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, no, they keep true. you out. They keep they, you they, out. They want you out. I thought it was so interesting. Um, I like King Charles, you know, it's it's still hard for me to say King Charles. I like King Charles because he is pro uh, saving the environment. He's always been um, sophisticated with saving some of the great architecture of London and so on. It's it's so amazing when you have that kind of power. Um, so he's got, like many men of his age, um, a, a large prostate. It's just it's one of the things. You know, women go through so much. Mary Mary was mentioning this the other day. They go through so much in their lives with their bodies. Guys get a pretty good pass for a long, long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. And then something like that hits. And um, he came out and, and, you know, he said, many men uh, go through this at my age. And I just want to make sure that people, you know, take care of themselves. And it's described as a corrective. He's going in with an enlarged prostate for a corrective procedure. I don't know how you correct that. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. No, no. I, I didn't think you could. I didn't think you could. But I think I think what they're doing is he's doing one of these procedures that because it used to be you walk in and you got that problem, they go, oh, no problem. Whack. Big surgery, yeah. take it out and be yeah. done. Yeah. You know, and then that causes a whole other set of problems. They've got some new things now that they don't have to disturb it. They can go in and they do laser and they do different stuff and it takes care of the problem. But it so does are you saying that there might there might be um, either precancerous cells? Yeah, it could be something precancerous or whatever, and they they're uh, they're taking care of that. Oh, good. Okay. I, I was, doctor, I've just never heard it described that way before. But a lot of doctors will tell you that at a I have certain a bottle age, here. Who's who's kidding? Who? <laughs> they uh, that probably most men that live to a ripe ripe old age will die with it not because of it yeah because, not because yeah. of it yeah 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 that's, it, that's very true it, it's not awesome when you get get it when you're younger but um i think that i think that for charles it probably isn't prostate cancer because i feel like he would be more forthcoming now yeah. i will say that like I just saw what who was it that just went by? 
Um, Teresa Broom, her boyfriend had quad bypass and they only kept him six days. Yeah. See? So, but that's America and we're not the princess of Wales, right? Yeah. If you're the princess of Wales, if you want to stay there three different. weeks, you'll stay there. You'll yeah. stay there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's now, a, well, good luck to both of them there. I, uh, now, I, I will right. say, I will say that when they sent Kevin home after his epic ordeal, the instructions that they gave me at the end of them, I was like, you, you do know I'm a morning DJ, right? Like, I was just like, <laughs> like, wait, what? I was so nervous um, and worried that I didn't sleep that first night. He was home. I just kept, I kept staring at him and taking his temperature and putting ice on his leg. Like, it's scary. It's scary very how lucky. quickly he they is, send you home. He's very lucky to have a woman who loves him that much. He really is. But they well, really he expect you to do a lot at home. And also, if you're in the hospital and you have surgery, if you don't have a family member staying with you, uh, I mean, yeah. oh, you, wait, you, wait. you have to be up there. You got to have somebody up there because they don't have enough nursing oh. staff to come in and check every 30 or 40. I mean, it's right. you got to have somebody stay with you. Yeah, they said right. to me, they said to me, um, one thing you might want to pay attention to. Um, if his toes turn bright blue or black, you probably want to call us. Oh, girl, you didn't need to tell me that. If I look down and he had a Papa Smurf foot, I am on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> because I am a morning DJ and do not know what the hell is going on. <laughs> speaking speaking of um, <coughs> being a morning DJ, so I'm in the uh, supermarket. When was this? Two days ago. And uh, I, I'm looking to get something for Finn. And I hear, is that you, Bob? When I hear that, you know, out in the wild, um, I get it tense I get up. Nervous. I tense yeah. up because like, I, I, this is bad. Is that you, Bob? I disagree with what you believe in and I'm going to shoot you. You know, you, have just, you don't know what to do. So I turned around and it was a vaguely familiar female face. And she said, I'm Anne. I won't say your last name. I'm Anne. And then it clicked. Anne was the woman that my ex and I sold a house to many, many, many years ago. No. And she's not That's unique. Odd. She's she's not unique because we sold houses to approximately 40% of the population of that town. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But this particular house was a nice house. We bought it from the son of Arthur Smith who wrote dueling banjos in deliverance it was his son who was like Arthur Smith's who's guitarist. Yeah. Uh, and, and made $20 million off of dueling banjos. We bought it from him. And then of course we had to move every two years. Cause that was, I don't know. I guess it, I you know, a house agreed. gets boring, Bob. Yeah, a house gets boring does. after two yeah. years. Yeah. Hey, any longer than that, you got to clean them baseboards. You're right. <laughs> You're exactly right. And why not just do a little painting. whole house, right? <laughs> so I said, well, how are you doing? It's nice to see you in and blah, blah, blah. And she didn't say anything negative at all about having purchased the house that I sold to her. But I have to tell you what happened. That house was in a floodplain. And um, people were ignoring that sort of thing back then. We sold that house, it's a very upscale neighborhood. And I think it was three months later, the rains came, the sewers backed up, and that in entire house was flooded with sewage, wiped out the entire house mm. it was a ranch a fairly good sized ranch house wow. when sewer backs up into your house and it's like a half a foot it ain't yeah. good <laughs> and i just thought i when i heard that that had happened to her and her husband i felt awful i mean it wasn't oh, like, well, i i had no idea no. But, but then you I, run into her at the grocery yeah, store yeah and she was so nice so nice so I bought her a new house. That's just what I do. You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ooh, Teresa says CNN has this as a developing story. Mystery deepens over Princess Kate's abdominal surgery as she has never had any known health issues. Oh, my know. God. Is, I love her. Come on. And I, you know what? Okay. So, okay. Okay. Darkness incoming. So, um, 
this little bit earlier, I was thinking about Princess Catherine and thinking, oh my God, is the Princess of Wales just cursed? First mm. Diana? Yes. Now this? Like, please let her be okay. Because she seems yeah. to be so just great. I mean, she really does. I, she yeah, really, I mean, she's so stylish. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know much about women's clothing, but with what we do, I'm always looking online or getting magazines. She is the most elegantly dressed woman. He I never ever wears ever. the wrong. I mean, she, everything yeah. is point. And she, I mean, she point. seems, she seems to really like be a person who's happy and at peace in her life. Yeah. And it's a difficult life. You know, you, she can't ever make a face. Right. Yeah. I and, hope, and, ever, and I she hope does it, she does it. Well, there was a posting today of, I don't know if the uh, it was at the, um, Elizabeth's funeral, but somebody was shooting her from behind and her daughter was right in front of her. And there was a moment where she was supposed to curtsy the daughter who was at that time. How old would her daughter be at that time? Maybe six, six years old at the most. And you could see you could see her take her hand and gently pat her daughter on the uh, back. And the daughter did the curtsy and the comments yeah. were, the comments were so sweet. They were saying what a lovely kind way for a mom to instruct a daughter in what was a difficult situation. I, I feel like uh, Catherine Middleton has like almost an impossible role to play because she has to be flawless in she has to be yeah. flawless in appearance flawless in behavior flawless as a mother flawless as a wife flawless as a princess flawless as a future queen yeah. i think the pressure must be pretty intense on her and um i i don't know i just have a weird feeling about this and i'm so i'm so sad and see she, she one thing that helps her though i don't think she had the kind of pressure that diana had because no, Diana had a, a, a terrible situation going on, and she's had. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that's um, true. Well, Di Diana um, was um, an incubator for the air, yeah. right? William loves Catherine. Yes, exactly. I mean for you real. can. That's for real. They, they have a. Yeah. For, I really do believe they have a for real. They they don't have drama going on. That's that's the main thing. There's not yeah. drama yeah. going on in their lives like Diana had for years and years and years. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, um, Regina, who works in the medical field, said maybe she has an infection that requires IV antibiotics and round the clock care. Yeah, I mean that. Like, there's so many things it could be, and we we should not say yeah. But two weeks in the hospital, we we get They're a brain tumor family. taken out, and we're home in two days. Yeah. Well, that's because let's be honest. Um, she may be getting more and better medical care. We're getting the bare minimum if we're lucky. Their deductible True. is already covered. It's just not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> and I and let me answer Pat Stevenson's question. She asked if I thought about getting like a home health person to help me in the morning. Kevin would hate that. And honestly, like I know it sounds like bullshit. Like I Bob will tell you, like I love taking care of people. Yeah. I love it. You're built and I, I actually enjoy like Mr. Nash, are you ready for your sponge bath? Like it's kind of a hoot, you know. Like I, <laughs> I, I like taking care of my family. I like taking care of him. And there have been more than more than a handful of times when the shoe's been on the other foot, and he has taken very good care of me. So he would hate a stranger coming in. And also, Pat, what are the chances I'm going to find a home health worker that'll show him the boobs? You know, like I, I got to do everything. There you right. go. They've yeah. got rules about that. That whole yeah. they oh here. they do. They you know, so you Listen, can't have anything fun anymore. <laughs> but we have we have we we talked about this when this happened to Carla. As a spouse, it's a really good time to figure out where are you at in this deal. Where are you at? You know, are you there to do what's got to be done when it needs to be done? Once you realize that, I know that no matter what happens. To Carla, I got it. And I've proven to her that I do have it. So she don't have to worry about it. I can't wait to see if I can prove that she'll do it. I don't know. I haven't been able to do that yet, but I'm, see, I'm I've working. been I've been lucky. I've had a couple of things. I had like a wicked um I had to have a bone graft in my jaw and he 
took care of me for that. I had a breast cancer scare and surgery and he took care of me for that. So, I mean, this is kind of like the deal, right? Yeah. But I, I was groomed and raised from a very early age to cook some things and put them on a tray and bring them to you. And, and all of that like programming has just been in the background waiting to be needed. And let, I really, I really don't mind. If I ever go down, if I ever go down, everybody that can hear my voice, send those DoorDash cards. Because <laughs> if I go down, we starve. If okay. I go down, Thank you, Lamar. we starve. Listen, Carly is a I, great cook, but she has not done it in so, so long. I think it would be a lot to ask of her to try to do it. I mean, you know well, and three ingredients. That's all she's yeah, willing yeah. to give a man. You will not three, go ingredients. Past three ingredients. If it takes hey, more than, she, you know, so I'm just saying. Y'all can, can uh, I piggyback on the, on Lamar and say that if I go down for more than five days, please send fucking vegetable to this house <laughs> because I don't want to die of scurvy in my bed. Like, please, I, if Mary's, it, it nothing if Mary's fancy, a head of lettuce, maybe yeah, an orange, like just I get it. If Mary's in bed and she can't cook or anything, we need those cards too. Cause it's going to be like, well, sweetheart, would you like to have pasta vizzle tonight or my wok cooking or spaghetti with red clam sauce? <laughs> Erica Wolf, I want to call out to you. That is still under investigation. We're not sure what, what shoe that she tripped over. So let's quit bringing that up. It's still under investigation. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> Sky, Sky Pig, uh, did uh, <laughs> Lamar leave his boots out there it, thought, <laughs> thoughtfully? <laughs> You can't, you cannot trust a swine. You cannot trust. <laughs> but you know what really matters, Lamar? It's not what caused the injury. It's what kind of care she received. Who stepped up? Afterwards. Who stepped up? Who stepped up? stepped up? That's right. Not and not only stepped up, but you were wheeling her around on the beach in Florida in July. I'm people, making a lot of people don't know the, the story you're referring to. The story is that Lamar left some shoes out and uh, Carla was walking through the house in the dark and she tripped on the on the shoes and uh, hurt her ankle very badly. I mean, that's the story behind the story for people who don't know it. Uh, and, and we won't bring it up again. I didn't bring it up during the week at all so far <laughs> in the broadcast. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. All right, so I hope she's going to be well, and I hope uh, Kevin's going to be well. And um, what else can I say? I uh, went through my closet this week and and donated a bunch of clothing that I don't wear anymore. I mean, if I haven't worn it in two years, I'm not going to be wearing it probably. And I, I just noticed that I hate, unless it's a fancy restaurant and I'm going to wear my blue blazer or my suit to a wedding, I cannot stand anymore to tuck my shirt in to my pants. Oh and my God. I, Welcome to my world of sensory hell. I can't stand to tuck anything in. Yeah. I can't stand anything tight around my waist. Uh, ever, ever, and, ever. And I think part of it was driven by COVID where I could do this with you guys by, you know, and wear sweatpants and an oversized t-shirt and, you know, nobody was talking to anybody. We weren't going anywhere. And it became more and more like that. And now I refuse to buy any clothing that doesn't fit me perfectly. Um, and it's hard because I want to wear the shirts out. You know, you don't want to wear a T-shirt out to dinner if you're going someplace nice. But, you know, you can be casually dressed. But I'm not a tall guy. And there are very few shirts that really fit me. There's a thing called the shorter guy tax where you get a shirt and it fits you great, except it's down to your knees. So now I got to take it and get it tailored or you look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just not going to buy anything anymore unless it really, really fits. And I tried to, I, I took one of my button down collar shirts and I tucked it into a pair of khaki pants Ew. Ew. and I looked at myself and I went, well, why don't you go out and sell some insurance right now? I can't do it. <laughs> can't that's, Ew. that's beyond me. Ew. I don't, you know, there's, um, there's a thing online, um, called who, what, where, and Heather knows what it is. And it's a fashion site. And it always has something like this. The five things no French woman would leave home without. Right, Heather? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
the top five jeans in Paris, you know, so I look at all this stuff and I'm fine with it until we get to anything that's like tucked in and buttoned and belted. The boobs are too big and I just can't stand. I feel like I'm suffocating in those kind of clothes. I, I am so thankful, Bob, every day. And I think you are too, to have the kind of job where I never had to dress like an actual adult. Yeah, that's true. The last time I, I did was when I was first in radio and I was in a real straight sort of radio station, very traditional uh, heritage radio station. And I thought, if if I come in here dressed like I'm dressed now, I'm going to look like a kid. And I don't want to look like a kid. I want to be taken seriously. And I wore a tie. Once they gave me morning drive, I wore a tie and suit every day. And thankfully, that's gone because doctors show up for examinations now. A friend of mine just told me that. His, he had a yearly yeah. physical. The doctor came in wearing sneakers, funny socks, blue, blue jeans, jeans, and a t-shirt underneath the white coat. So we've changed. I just, I just want to say, life is a misery. Like, why do you have to be uncomfortable on top of it? And especially for women where the trends, the clothes, like, excuse you. Like, I don't want to buy a new wardrobe of uncomfortable, miserable clothes every year. No, right. yeah. absolutely not. When are you all going to give up high heels? They, they just seem so ridiculous and they're so terrible for your feet. I only wear them now if I have like an event or we're going out. It's been a minute since. Yeah since yeah. I've worn them. I mean, really since uh, Friday the 13th, March, 2020, I basically live in sneakers and Birkenstocks, but I mean, there are times when I stand in my closet and I think, Oh, my red high heel suede shoes. I wish I had a reason to wear them, but unless I'm going to do some kind of crazy Catwoman role play around here. <laughs> and Oh, now I have to add that to cooking every meal and sponge baths. I think not. <laughs> Well, um, we're coming to an end here slowly. Wait, wait, um, I have to answer a question. Somebody asked if I did something to Kevin. No, he had to have orthopedic surgery. He's been hard on his body. This is, we're not reliving the movie Misery. I didn't break I'm his legs. I'm glad you cleared that up. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. So um, we hope everybody, uh, especially with the uh, colder climbs, uh, stays safe. It's been uh, quite a struggle. There's still a lot of cold. Uh, air up there and um it's even it's in the south air down here too yeah We're it's even in the south and, hey lamar uh, um what are you reviewing tomorrow is the people's movie critic oh yeah beekeepers beekeeper oh my gosh jason statham oh, oh, oh yeah you don't oh, want to miss yes. this it's good. it's good and how about talking lamar what are we doing do you know what do you know what you're listen, doing listen this is lamar? a two for one talking lamar i'm giving you all the facts that you don't know about jason statham and a bunch of facts you don't know about bees. This is two for one. Two for one. Right. And tomorrow's um true weird stuff is uh called Hungry Puppet, and it tells the wild, shocking, and unbelievable true story of a Christian puppet ministry dude in Florida who, first of all, he was a terrible ventriloquist, like painfully bad ventriloquist with his puppets. But what he really wanted to do was eat the children. <laughs> what? <laughs> all true. That would have not happened if he could have said the B word while he was doing ventriloquism. That B word takes us all down. It really does. Oh my God. Lamar, this guy, like I, I, I can't do ventriloquism. I can't juggle. Oh. I can't even ride a unicycle like you, but mm. I'm looking at this guy. This is his level of ventriloquism. Hang on. Let me show you what it was. Okay. So this is the puppet. This is nappy. My puppet. Here he is. Well, hey, Nappy, are you having a good day? I really am having a good day. <laughs> oh, well. well. What do you want to say to the boys and girls? Something really unsavory, Ron, but I, oh, Nappy. Oh, you're so funny. Thank you, Ron. I, I'm like, hello. He's supposed to be a freaking ventriloquist. He doesn't even make an effort to have his mouth on me. Well, well, I really don't care about ventriloquism. I'm here to eat the children. My God, humanity is strange. So that's the new true weird stuff that the download tomorrow night. Well, it's nice to leave people with an up note. Have yes. a great, great uh, day at work tomorrow. Right, Sky Pig? 
and a wonderful weekend. And we <laughs> will see you on the Bob and Sherry show. We love y'all. It's great to be back with happy hour. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Okay. You're